Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Synthetic Dawn in our Cooperate or Die series. We're in the process of building up our fleet, the first security echelon. And I think what I want to do this episode, uh, we do have some um, some Ruby Swarm uh, enemies to deal with uh, that are in some planet, in some systems that I definitely need to colonize. And we need to be focused as much as possible on uh, continuing to colonize uh, and trying to get around the Mawir caretakers because they are, despite the fact that they're pacifists, they're kind of going nuts with their expansion plans, so we just need to make sure I stay on, or I just need to make sure that I stay on top of them entirely. Um, also, let me go ahead and add this system to the Akram sector. Let's also make sure that our other sectors, yeah, see, Canopus here can be added. I noticed a little bit of Border Gore when I loaded the save up. No, 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 not that. Uh, also, that reminds me, let's take a look at um, sector settings. We definitely want sectors to be able to build robots. Because otherwise, let me show you why. Otherwise you end up with, where are you? Oh no, we haven't colonized currency yet. Let's look at, uh, say, Akram. You end up with planets like this. So the sectors haven't actually been building population. Again, this is an adaptation. This is It's taken me a few episodes to realize this, and I appreciate it because it's a commenter that pointed out, hey, you need to make sure you turn that on for your sectors. I'm going to say, in my defense, it's a little bit unintuitive that uh, that we have to do that. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's just one of the things you have to do to make sure that, uh, that this is going smoothly. So lesson learned for me. Um, sector settings are not something... I mean, I, I definitely have paid attention to them. I've set a couple of, of sectors to, you know, financial focus. But... Um, it's just something to be uh, aware of if you're playing a machine empire, and it's not necessarily, again, very intuitive. So, let's see, we could tell them to respect, no, we don't need to tell them to respect uh, tower resources. So we just want to make sure that they know they can build robots, and that way the sectors will be much more productive soon. Um, now I have some science, sect science ships that are ready to go out and explore, but um, I think, oh yeah, that's right, we had this, this ruby stack here that we need to take care of. So I think the first security echelon is waiting for upgrades here in Akram, and then we're going to send them to take care of the ruby stack so the science ships can continue to explore. Um, meanwhile, let's... I'm going to unpause things here. And we're going to continue to let resources pile up so that we can uh, build more cruisers and such. I think right now we... Yeah, we only have one cruiser. It's the cruiser we found earlier in the series in a gas giant somewhere. Oh yeah, lots of upgrades. Let's keep this coming. These upgrades are going to be kind of expensive, but I've got the game on speed 2. Let's put it on speed 3. There we go, and this might take care of the rest. Uh, not quite. Almost there. So yeah, having the robot building turned off for the sectors um, was probably has probably been affecting me pretty substantially, and that's why the sectors haven't been too productive yet. So now that I've got that switched on, Technology. you're going to see a noticeable difference in the productiveness of all the sectors that I've started, especially the ones that have been standing for a while. Um, so I appreciate that there hasn't been a, a resounding chorus in the comments uh, about that. But then again, I've, I've pre-recorded a lot of episodes, so between you guys seeing this episode and me recording it, uh, there may be a resounding chorus, like going, dude, you need to turn that on. Um, so yeah, I've caught up in that regard, and we will uh, we'll definitely stay focused on that. I need to go ahead and colonize Carenza, don't I? But we also need influence, and the thing is, we need to save influence because we need to... We need this. We need our new Civic. And it costs what exactly? 250 influence? Ridiculous amounts of influence. Okay. To do that? All right. So now we have access to um, fighter wings and bomber wings. Battleship assembly yards are tempting. Durasteel armor is also tempting. We don't have cruiser assembly yards yet. Let's go ahead and build those, or research those, because it's going to take just 10 months. And then how's the first security echelon doing? Was that just... Really? No, 18 months, not 10. Um, okay, so the first security echelon is still upgrading. Meanwhile, let's see what else we can upgrade here. Yep, this will help our mineral income in the meantime. Thankfully, our core sector is so amazing that we're still getting away with murder in terms of our resource income. We're doing really well. But we certainly need our sectors to start doing more in terms of building pops. So one thing I may do as well in order to help them get their feet off the ground is... I might let resources build up for a second, and rather than pouring it into ships right away, as a kind of a, as kind of an emergency economic measure, 
I need to pour some resources into the sectors to address that issue. So that they actually have, you know, money to spend. Meanwhile, I'm also upgrading my mineral output a good bit right now. Let's go back up to speed three. First security echelon is still waiting for upgrades. And part of the reason it's waiting for upgrades is I'm using up all the resources as they come. So it's my fault, actually. But we need these resources. We need all of these things upgrading. Governor Helpalot S9 has developed new skills. He has the rigid programming traits. All right, so it just seems like as certain leader characters age, they become crappier because they're robots and they just, they're crap. Okay, the Sildan Commonwealth and the Interplanetary Empire um, have declared a rivalry. Okay. Wait a minute. This, yeah, this, the, so it's the Sildan Commonwealth and the Sildan Interplanetary Empire, so that must be a rebel faction. Has to be. Okay, here we go. I think that might have been the last of my core worlds that needed those upgrades. Let's take another look. Nope, a few more. So amazingly, it's actually my core sector that's driving the majority of my income right now, uh, given that I didn't have build pops turned on for sectors. So uh, that's going to change, and you're going to see the, in the economy continue to get better and better, including the energy economy, since I have sectors so focused on that. Okay. Now we're going to let resources come in so these upgrades can happen. Good, they're happening right now. So as soon as this fleet is done upgrading, what I'll do is I'm going to let resources pile up while this is happening. You're going to come in here and take care of the ruby stacks. I'll put it on speed 3 so they can get there quickly. I'm going to let resources pile up the whole time. And influence as well. But while resource, and also we are seven months away from new tradition. Nice, which means we're going to get a new ascension perk, which means we might be able to get that border perk to push back against these jerks. I think I'm going to, I don't think that there is an alternative to that. I think that's what I'm going to have to go for. I will investigate the options, but oh wow. Yeah, we've got an energy deficit now because the first security echelon is underway. But our mineral income is flying upward and I'm going to pour it into sectors shortly so they can start building pops that's going to make all the difference in the world. And sooner or later they can start building their own, but I'm going to I'm just going to let it pile up until this combat's taken care of. We're going to have a ton of resources. As Hadrian starts going through his other the only thing I'll use it on is this. Yeah, see there's still a few here. Our construction is complete. Up oh, there's our tradition. Let's pause for a second. Seven months went by fast. Wow, still lots of upgrades. I guess we did a... Uh, that's right, we upgraded to... I remember now. We, we upgraded to a, um, a technology where there were two levels, I think, of mine. So these are double upgrades that we're having to do. One upgrade finishes, then we have to queue up the next one. Okay. New tradition. All right, so now we... Assist research produces one unity per scientist uh, lo skill level, and researching uplink miniaturization increases the effect to two unity per skill level. And then also getting all five will mean that our research speed increases by 10%. That's one of the reasons we went for this. And now we have an ascension perk. Again, um, so we have the option of World Shaper, Galactic Force Projection, Defender of the Galaxy, Interstellar Dominion, which is the one I'm tempted to get for, Galactic Contender, Mastery of Nature, Shared Destiny, Synthetic Age... Ah, oh, see... This sounds so cool, um, but I just think in order to really compete against these guys, I don't know. Um, they're te technologically they're way ahead of us, so yeah, I'm gonna have to wait. I think we should go for the borders first. I just think that's the way to go. So with that being done, there we go. Gives us a little bit more room, pushes back against their border encroachment. Now, with the next one, we'll probably get the synthetic, um, the one we were just looking at. Let's let's look at Ascension Perks. Traditions, what was it called? Synthetic Age? Yeah, because those modification points, they could give us something that will make our robots, for instance, better at researching. So we'll keep an eye on that. But anyway, let's let resources continue to pile up here. 
our energy income is going down for now. But again, once those once those uh, bots start building in all of my sectors, and once they start building their own, conceived. things should be a little better. Technology conceived, cruiser assembly arts, okay. Ah, another machine modification point. I think I should go ahead and go for that. Or should I go for mining network four and five? So many choices. Kinetic weapon damage, we're not using kinetic weapons, but I kind of want to get that out of the way so that it's not an option anymore. Um, but I kind of like this one the most, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I like also like the idea of more machine modification points, considering what just happened a moment ago. Um, let's go ahead and go for that, and that's kind of the best of both worlds. That way we can modify our race again sooner with another trait that could be helpful. All right, we can't afford to continue the deal right now. We're going to have to go back and get more of those deals reestablished in the future. Okay. First security echelon is arriving. There they are. One, two, three, four. Let's let them take care of this pretty quickly. I don't suspect we will lose any ships here. I really don't. Matter of fact, we should take them down pretty quickly. Go on. Again, just going to let resources pile up for a second. As soon as we're done with this and the science ships are back exploring again, then I will um, send them further. Th then I will send a bunch of resources to the uh, sectors. Okay. Oh, wait. There's, is there one more? Yeah, there is. There's one more. It's a group of three cruisers. And we, as predicted, have not lost any ships. Actually making quick work of them, which is nice. Um, I don't see any... Um, there's nothing to uh, scavenge there, interestingly enough. So, okay, let's go ahead and, first of all, let's have these guys upgrade. Then auto-explore, upgrade, auto-explore, upgrade. Oh man, they all have to upgrade. I didn't know that, or I would have done this sooner. And we also have a colony ship that is staying put, I think for the uh, Gaia world. That's because we have to take care of the Ruby Swarm. Now, we can probably go ahead and safely do that while the first security echelon is out here. So let's um let's take care of that right now. Where would you fly in? Okay, you'd fly in here. I'm going to let them do this. Because the colony ship, we, we need to get that Gaia world right now. Okay, and let's go ahead and give the sectors some resources while I'm thinking about it. They, I'll go ahead and send you a few energy credits, um, just because you're in a deficit, but you need minerals mainly. So let's see, we have 7,000 um, to divide between three different, so that's going to be roughly 2,300, 2,400 or so minerals each. So, okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So now they have a lot more to build with. That'll be helpful for the sectors. And energy income should start going up. The first security echelon definitely needs to get back to... This is going to be a little dicey, actually. This combat, because we have such a energy deficit at the moment... Hang on, is there anything we can do to rectify that? You definitely build mining stations and research stations here. This construction ship. Is there anything down here? I think I've built everything I possibly can out here. Well, there is a... Yeah, come down here and build those. Take care of that for me. And then I have a construction ship over here that could come up here and do some... energy mining. So let's focus purely on energy for now, because that's what we need. Well, I'm just, I'm going to queue up mining stations in general, so we'll get minerals as well, but. So that will offset the energy a little bit, but if I just focus on building stations that are going to improve my resource income, it should be a little better. Oh, goodness. I didn't realize we were going to have to go all the way around. All right. All right, so we've arrived in the Hojaka system. We're attacking the first group. We have 141 and 50 ship distribution. I uh, don't think we're going to lose a single ship here. Nice. Alright, so this combat could be a little different here. Our swarm is 
Okay. Science ships are upgrading, so they're going to head back and start auto-exploring again. That'll be good for our research. Okay, we did lose, looks like, uh, a destroyer. Sadly, so I'll have to replace that in a moment. But for now, let's finish off these guys. Okay, so we just lost the deal. Well, no, we didn't. Hang on. Uh, let's pay a visit to these guys. We would like to trade for energy credits. And let's trade in... There we go. It's a deal. Okay, so that system has been cleared. Let's have them return to Mardom, which has a station. Good. Actually, can we go ahead? Let's have Mardom build um, service umbrellas, as well as an observatory and such. We'd probably benefit from going through and making sure stations are built around all of our colonies in sectors, just to make sure we have everything necessary uh, in the area. Let's see. Science ship is up there. Okay, you've got one here. Oh, you're, you're all already back there. Not bad. I wasn't expecting you to all be... All right. Survey the system, starting with that Gaia planet, and then we're going to bring the colony ship in right now. Yeah, so they're going to heal up. And let's also take a quick look at what ship we lost. We're down one Iron Ward class destroyer. So, yeah, I was going to try and build one from the designer screen. Why I did that, I have no idea. All right, there's that. Let's also take a quick look at our stations and make sure we finished building all these. I think we did last episode, driving you guys crazy. I'm sure. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yep, upgrade. There we go. Okay, once these guys are back in orbit, our income should be better. Back in orbit of Mardom, that is. Also, we have the ability to take on the Evolve system anytime we want now, which is nice. The Colossal Impact Crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this moon once. We're finally seeing uh, anomalies again now that we're exploring. And it seems like we are once again trapped. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> we are getting bottlenecked every which way the series. And now we can't... See, it's going to be hard to, to go out and kill them quickly because our energy income is such crap at the moment. If we go back out, our energy income will hit zero. Thankfully, they're not that strong. Large mineral-rich asteroid collided with SO3 at some point during the... Okay, that's great. Wonderful. Alright, so energy income is still crap in spite of everything. Why is that? Let's build some mining stations, guys. Get this taken care of. Alright, looks like we are ready here. Let's go ahead and colonize. I hate to do this because, again, we're trying to save up influence to customize the government, but we need this Gaia world more than we need anything else. So why don't we go ahead and... Uh, that's going to be a good spot. Plop a colony station, or a colony center right down there. Excellent. Alright, so for this sector, actually, I'm going to go ahead and add these planets. and we'll continue to expand it as necessary. However, this science ship, I don't know why you're not doing anything. We have the oh, because they just finished surveying it. Why is it showing it's not surveyed? If it is surveyed. Okay, there's another, oh, there's another ship already doing it. Colossal Impact Crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. We literally just saw that same event. Okay, yeah, energy income is still, unfortunately, going down. In spite of everything. This is the... This is the downside of having not had robots uh, in... I mean, one thing I can do... Can I go ahead and build... I can't build my own population. Yes, I can. I can actually... Okay, on my colony worlds here, that's what I'll do. Okay, problem solved. 
I can make things better a little faster. Whoa, hello. Let's start with our original sector. And I can build the populations myself. Build multiple, and what's going to be these guys, right? Yeah. So one, two, three, four. And then I can't clear these. Oh, we can't afford to clear it. Oh, that's funny. Um, but it takes minerals to build populations, so. Now, the only downside to building more population is this is going to affect my energy income, too. So there's going to be a, a counterbalance here. But we, we still have to do this. Like, these population need to be... Yeah, see, planets like this, this is why. So let's go ahead and... Build all these population. And let's see what happens with just one sector for now. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so those four have been, like, every possible population has been has been added there. Um, let's see what happens if we just let those build. Okay, we get some physics research from a warp impact, which shaved some months off the zero-point reactor. Conceived. What technology was just conceived? Probability engine. Nice. So this is, um, ah, an energy credit. That came at a good time. We're getting 10% more energy now well once we build this thing so hang on let's see if we replace this with the probability engine which costs influence to build but thankfully i have enough once again we're gonna have to wait to get that civic modification empire leader capacity plus two that's tempting Nif capacity plus 10 percent. let's go ahead and do that just to knock it out all right so when that's done building Things will be better. Oh, hello. We've got a tropical world we need to colonize right now. The wild storms. All right, it's going to cost 82 influence to colonize that. Let's go ahead and get a colony ship built at the progenitor. And we'll send them out because we need that just in order to secure our borders. Massive storms are visible in the upper atmosphere of this gas giant. It might be worth the effort to study them in more detail. Well, then do so, please. So, Dan, Commonwealth entered into a defensive pact with the Grok Deplorian commonality. Where are the Grok Deplorians again? So, these guys. No, wait. No, the Commonwealth. Okay, so the Commonwealth, the rebel faction, is being defended. Okay, um, still building the uh, probability engine here. But our energy income is improving, actually. So, this might be a result of some of those populations going up. Um... Let me see how the sectors are doing with their resources. I'm, I know I'm pausing a lot. I'm doing it on purpose. Yeah, see, they've used almost all of their minerals up that I gave them. So let's go ahead and give them more so that they can continue to build stuff. Another thing I can do is go ahead and start taking more taxes from all of them. Kahan's 5 frequently experiences massive and extremely violent storms systems in its atmosphere. Nice. Hello, that's much better. Okay, so now we're in a much better position to... Okay, energy situation just got solved by that building. So we're going to send the first security echelon, which is right here, to Kosk right now. And we can afford it. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, we're definitely going to go ahead and build every other pop that I can on all my other colony worlds as soon as possible. So, the economy is going to go nuts over the next couple of episodes. That is the truth. All right, the colony ship, you need to come here. I'm a little worried about K Hines because I don't know that we'll get to it in time. They're, the Mawir's borders are just ridiculous. Like, look, look at what's happening. How is this happening? <laughs> it's just, it's happening so quickly. 
I mean, one thing we could definitely do is, is build a frontier station, but we need influence to build a frontier station. So I think we might lose yet another colony to them. Technology and if they take that world too, okay, maybe their borders will stop short. It seems like they're, they're stopping their expansion there because it's far enough away from their other systems. Cross your fingers. And I just realized we're at the 25. Nope, nope, it just fell in their territory. Holy crap! This is insane. I have never had this happen in the game of Solaris with with uh, a peaceful empire whose borders are just blossoming like this. This is crazy. Let me take a quick look at. Let's see, they're xenophobes, rivalry influence game. They they I guess because they're xenophobes, their border range is fifteen percent. But they've always been xenophobes. Um, they're overwhelming compared to us. Um, man. So what we'll have to do is build a um. We'll have to use our influence. Let's get a construction ship out to Solu. And we're going to build a frontier outpost once we have 75 influence, but then we'll have to wait for the influence to colonize Khines. And I hope that that will be close enough to colonize that system. I don't know. But hang on. Um, army upkeep minus 10%. We could go ahead and do that. Ship upgrade cost minus 25%. Ooh. Yeah, let's definitely do that. Um, but I will go ahead and stop this episode here. And the next one, we're going to see if we can get the Khine system. I am... Shocked and frustrated at how quickly these guys are expanding. I really thought I could contain them here, but they just, I mean, the Mogwar caretakers are a force to be reckoned with. And I am, I mean, it seems like uh, some of you were pointing out that there, there might be another empire down here, and I'm sure there is, but uh, it's just so shocking given that they are pacifists. You wouldn't necessarily think that they would be this dominant force but it's not just that they're expanding rapidly with adding new territory their borders are just growing at insane rates so um i don't know I, hopefully this won't be a runaway ai uh, it would be the first time that i've experienced this thing in a game of stellaris on or off youtube um but uh yeah i wish i was building robotic populations sooner speaking of that um, i will build a whole bunch of new robotic populations in the next in the beginning of the next episode because we have the minerals for it and then we're going to build our ships because we need to but uh, for now, I'll stop this one here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.